Joining me right now is a man who is going to answer some questions I'm sure a lot of uh, you out, out there have, uh, particularly when it comes to uh, managing your money. And we've all heard about uh, IRAs, Roth IRAs, traditional IRAs, and a lot of rule changes, too, that have just uh, come into place. We're joined now by uh, certified financial planner John Bledsoe. He's written a book called The Gospel of Roth, and uh, hopefully he can answer some questions for us now. And, uh, uh, John, good to talk to you today. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Great to talk to you. I think this is a great idea to have this book come out because uh, so many people are uh, maybe not confused, but they're probably like looking through all the rules when they're doing their taxes now and maybe say, well, should I change to an IRA? Should I go to a Roth? I mean, you're probably getting a lot of that in your, in your private business, aren't you? Absolutely. There's so many questions, and now we've got the first time ever that uh, everyone can convert beginning January of this year of 2010. Everyone can now convert from a regular IRA to a Roth IRA. Right? And the question becomes, should I convert? Well, what's the, I mean, I know there's several factors you have to look into it, and then you go through it in the book, but what would be the main number one thing to look at right now? Should I or should I not convert to a Roth? Well, I really think that everybody with an IRA, which includes a lot of people, the government says there's over $3 trillion of money that's been saved, even after this pullback in the market, into IRAs. A lot of that money came from retirement plans at work and they've been ultimately rolled over into IRAs, and I believe that rather than do a bunch of analytical stuff, I take a, uh, a stand that everybody should convert now and ask questions later, because the government gives you a mulligan. They give you a do-over on this, and you can, you can convert from a, a tax-deferred IRA. Let's say you, you had a big one, $100,000 in your IRA, and you could convert that today to a Roth IRA, and just wait and see. You've actually got it until October the 17th of 2011 to go firm on it. You can any time up till then, October 17th of 2011, which is, you know, 620 days or so from the first part of February uh, of uh, 2010 to uh, to watch the account. And, and, of course, if the account goes up, if it goes up by 30%, you've got 130000 in it, then you only have to pay the taxes to make it tax-free forever on 100000 It's like a discount on your taxes. And if, it, if you decide that you don't want to do it or you don't want to do all of it, you can unconvert it. The government calls that recharacterize. But uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, I love this. Uh, the reason the book's called The Gospel of Roth, my daddy was a preacher, and I, uh, I love this uh, terminology, convert, you know, convert to the Roth. Right? <laughs> it's like you ought to have a white suit and, uh, and, and be preaching. <laughs> but the, uh, the unconversion, I guess if you were Baptist, you'd call it backsliding. The uh, unconvert, to do it over, is allowed in the law. been around for 13 years as long as the Roth IRA's been around. And what I think people miss is they start running a bunch of calculations and how am I going to pay the tax and should I pay it from here or here or am I going to be a lower or higher tax bracket? And all these questions actually might be overcome by whether or not the account goes up or goes down. So I'm telling people, convert now run the numbers after you know how much it's gone up or gone down, and it'd be easier for you. And the basic difference is the traditional IRA, you put money in and you can deduct that, whatever you put in that account, off your taxes. The Roth, you already paid the taxes on whatever your payroll is, right? And you take it off later? Is that is that the basic difference? It, it, yeah, that's the basic net of it. it, it it's so the Roth, you know, they look the same. If you had a $10,000 account that was a Roth IRA and a $10,000 account that was a regular IRA, and they grew by the same amount, the same mutual fund, they look like the same amount of money, but the regulars, you get a uh, tax deduction from the uh, uh, time you put it in, but they are growing tax deferred, and they've actually got a debt against it. You can't spend 10000 on your regular IRA if that's what the balance is, because you owe, if you're in the 30% average bracket, you're going to owe $3,000 to the government when you take the 10000 out, whereas the Roth is tax-free and it grows tax-free forever. And uh, as long as you're alive, unlike the regular IRA, you have to start taking it out once you turn 70, which sounded old a long time ago, but now people, as they approach this 70 age, uh, technically it's 70 and a half. How about that for the government? <laughs> you know, you know, just to make it a little more confusing, we're not going to make it 70 or 71. We're going to make it 70 and a half. Well, you have to mandatorily start taking money out of a regular IRA, and a Roth IRA has no mandatory lifetime distribution. So people as they get older can see that they make 
back to save money longer and converting before they have to start those mandatory distributions are important for them as well. But now you say that the tax this year, it's almost like a carry forward then, right? You can do half this year and next year. Is that, is that kind of like a carry and forward in a, in a it, sense? Yeah, it's sort of like a carry forward. Now, the dilemma is going to be, and that's why I love this delay of uh, looking at it. it. It appears that tax-free, you know, if I don't have to, like, let's take that $100,000 example, if you were a 35% uh, taxpayer, which is the maximum bracket, then 35% uh, may look cheap in 2010 because 2011 and 2012 are already slated. If the Congress does nothing, the bush cuts are going to go away. And beginning January of, of uh, 2011, the maximum bracket's going to be 39.6% again. Mm. So we may be looking into next January like the crystal ball, uh, uh, except we will have to live through it and know that, okay, tax rates are a lot higher, so I'm going to go ahead and pay those taxes in 2010 instead of taking advantage of that blue light special. Uh, but it's very similar to a carry forward in that you don't, uh, uh, you don't have to pay any taxes uh, for 2010 for 2010 conversions if you choose not to but then you have to pay it at whatever the rates are. In that $100,000 example, you would simply have $50,000 of additional taxable income for 2011 and 50000 for 2012. And for some people, that's going to be better. And for others, the uh, paying it all in uh, 2010 will be better. It depends on the person's situation that they can analyze really after they convert now. And then, you know, the, the analyticals should probably start beginning of next year because, you, like I say, you have the ability to undo it. And so you, uh, you probably want to run what we call the pick and choose. And that, that's essentially uh, you... You, people tend to have diversification, and they should have diversification in their investments. Let's say you had three different mutual funds. Don't convert into one Roth IRA. Convert into three mm -hmm. IRAs, one with each mutual fund, because if one goes way up, you could leave it converted and pay the taxes on it because you saw it go up so much, and then unconvert the other two and start them over again in future years. And so the government lets you pick and choose. If you left them all in the same Roth IRA, you'd have to do just a proportional amount, and you wouldn't get the benefit of that. So that's why everybody ought to convert into multiple IRAs if they have multiple investments. Yeah, I think that's something I, I was not aware of until I, I looked through your book, that you can have more than one IRA. I, I always thought you could only have the one on the traditional. You can, yeah, you can have, uh, you know, it's up to the limitations each year for your contributions, mm -hmm. but many people have, have them scattered about, they, right. uh, particularly people with retirement plans. And, and so uh, oftentimes the, uh, the, the account manager or the brokerage house, whether it's Schwab or UBS or Merrill Lynch, uh, they oftentimes allow you to have multiple Roth IRAs for free or for the same small custodial fee that they charge. And, and so they're in favor of... Uh, try to facilitate this where you get the best bang for the buck tax-wise. And so you never should have one Roth IRA conversion uh, if you have different investments because, you know, what you don't know. If you knew in advance, you just put all your money in the one that went up the most. But sure. uh, kind of like that old Mark Twain quote. But uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, if I knew how to do that, I'd just be doing it. <laughs> You'd be in Vegas. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Well, the book really gives some, uh, some great details. You have forms in there as well. People can look through that and, and some, uh, some tables of, of uh, mathematics that will help people out. It's a great idea for a book called The Gospel of Roth. John, give out a website if you want to direct people to to get more information on you or the book. Absolutely. The website for the book is gospelofroth.com. That's G-O-S-P-E-L-O-F-R-O-T-H dot C-O-M. And the books are available at bookstores everywhere, Amazon.com. Uh, has the book, and uh, and that website, gospelofroth.com, is a great place to start. Great, John. Pleasure to talk to you. Thanks for uh, clearing up some questions. I know that people are going to take a look at this because, uh, like you said, this year is, is a big one as far as, uh, as far as taxes go, and maybe next year as well. But uh, thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you so much for having me. You have a good day. Mm -hmm.